Yeah, hi everyone from Alice Springs. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Noongar Nation and thank them for hosting us here and acknowledge the uh, Western Aranda and Luritja people uh, where we work and live in Central Australia. Uh, this is about the central rock rat. Um, they're a beautiful looking rodent. Uh, they're about 70 grams in size, live in boulder screes and, and rocky areas. Um, and yeah, we're managing feral cats to protect them. Uh, they are critically endangered. Uh, they once had a much wider distribution in rocky range country in central Australia, and there's sub fossil evidence right to the Western Australian coast through uh, the Pilbara. Uh, but they're only known now in uh, two very small localities, in small refuges up on very um, rugged and high elevation mountain ranges. Uh, one in Jerich National Park and one next door in the Haas Bluff Aboriginal Land Trust. Um, they were given the title of the most likely mammal to go extinct in the next 20 years. Um, and feral cats are the, the key threatening process there. So we needed to work out a way that we could uh, manage feral cats. Um, I mentioned they're in remote and rugged locations, so there's not a lot of options for the different methods of hunting and um, trapping. So we went with an aerial baiting option across um, the, the core area in the Chiricha National Park to see if we could remove feral cats um, and do that consistently year to year and monitor the response of feral cats and also rock rats and other native animals to the, uh, to the baiting effort. Um, and if that has all worked out, then we could potentially expand that uh, to um, cover other areas where the rock rats are and um, hopefully have some improvements for the population and get it out of that critically endangered um, status. And to do that, put it into uh, management plans so that it is an ongoing project for national parks and the um, Aboriginal ranger groups to have ongoing management of, um, for the species. So our experimental feral cat control was uh, done in Jurichu National Park. Uh, there are four areas where we knew rock rats were on the top of the mountain ranges. And two of these areas we kept um, as controls, so unbaited for feral cats, and two areas, um, which is about 80 square kilometers that we baited for feral cats, and monitored those before and after baiting uh, with uh, camera traps. Um, looking at um, how many animals were there, we could identify individuals from their coat patterns um, and we did fairly well. Um, it varies across uh, the number of animals each year. So uh, in slightly wetter periods, you end up, end up with more individual cats. There's more food around. Um, and as the years dried out through 2019, 2020, the, the population of cats naturally declined. But our, our baiting showed a, a strong effect. We were removing those known individual feral cats from the baited areas. And in all but, except for one individual, all of the individuals from before the baiting weren't found after the baiting. The ones that are there afterwards have reinvaded in our uh, monitoring period. So they were all new individuals. Um, as for a statistical effect, uh, it's really difficult to measure things like density for feral cats. Uh, in 2018, when we had lots of animals, we could measure that there was an obvious density change. Um, but in 2020, when we only had one cat detected in the, the non-baited area, there is effectively no difference before and after between one and zero cats. So it's just interesting to see if you were going to do your experiment in a really dry period, you might not actually get an effect. And being able to track these projects over multiple years, you'll be able to see uh, what environmental conditions are suitable for these different control methods. Um, importantly, did removing feral cats actually have an effect on the rock rat? Um, we used camera traps again, um, vertically um, placed over a bait station, and uh, they're quite easily um, identified. They've got a fully furred tail, and it's the only rodent in our area that looks anything like this. So uh, we got lots of data year to year to see how the, the baiting in the previous year um, improved or, or didn't change the, the rock rat population um, uh, to the next year. And we used occupancy modeling, a, a dynamic um, or uh, yeah, dynamic occupancy modelling for this. Um, and we were able to show that the red line here indicates where the year that the, the baiting started and we baited every year after that. And we could show that there was a higher probability of colonisation or an expansion of the rock rats in those baited areas and lower probability of extinction. So they were persisting better in those baited areas. Uh, so there's a bit of a separation in the occupancy. So they increased and stayed higher in the baited areas. 
you'll see in the in the last year there, 2020, they, they converged again. But that was the year that there was actually very few cats in the unbaited area. So that experiment of actually monitoring the cats as well as the rock rats, we could show that if you've got very few cats in the landscape anyway, uh, you're not going to expect a difference between the baited and the unbaited. So I think it was an ex a success. Um, we could show that we could remove cats. Uh, sorry, yeah, other animals that we're monitoring at the same time. So uh, other dasyurids, um, so the mammals that are likely to eat meat baits, we were concerned that we'd actually knock out the Sudantichinus or long-tailed dunnard, but there was no effect of the baiting on those species. But the black-footed rock wallaby showed a, a very um, strong increase in those uh, baited areas um, compared to the unbaited areas. So that was another great uh, result from that, um, from that study. So baiting feral cats, yes, removed feral cats from the treatment areas. There was different numbers of cats in different environmental conditions. And it improved the occupancy for the central rock rat and rock wallabies. And those are two, well, yeah, the target animals, uh, the threatened species that were improving their uh, their status. Um, so from that information, we were able to expand feral cat management. Uh, just these areas in white are the only places that we know that the rock rats exist in the National Park. We've surveyed pretty widely in, across the ranges there. And we wanted to be able to protect those refuges and then hopefully allow rock rats to expand and colonise new areas and hopefully have better genetic exchange. If they're so isolated over time, then it's not going to be good for any of the populations. Uh, so we um, consulted with people with uh, parks and wildlife, um, wildlife ecologists, myself and uh, other people involved and the um, traditional owners as to which areas we could um, bait for feral cats in. And we came up with this area in the western half of the national park um, which gave us good coverage of the, uh, the refuges and, um, and it would allow the population to expand. Um, and we've also been monitoring uh, these areas using camera traps and an occupancy uh, model this time. And as with uh, that many camera traps, you have uh, a database of, of hundreds of thousands of images, but we've taken on the AI method and uh, using mega detector to uh, process all those images and just take the um, photos with animals. And we had a really good result. We could sh show a statistical significant change in occupancy of feral cats in those baited areas. Um, this is really important. Uh, how can I go to my managers and the funders and say, uh, is, what am I, is what we're doing actually having an effect? And yes, we are removing feral cats from those parts of the landscape. And part of that will feed into how we develop the management plans for these areas. And um, part of the, uh, what we call the ICS, Integrated Conservation Strategy for the National Park. But then working with the um, traditional owners and land managers, the Haas Bluff Aboriginal Land Trust, and coming up with a, a set of methodologies that we can use in uh, different areas and use some spatial planning about uh, whether we use aerial baiting, uh, trapping, um, and other control methods around communities to uh, improve the um, plight for the rock rat in those areas. Uh, I think I've raced through this, but uh, yeah, really like to thank the Territory NRM and um, other people who've been providing money for these projects. Threatened Species Commissioner's Office have been very supportive and uh, WA um, Department of Biodiversity Conservation and Attractions have been providing the eradicat baits as well. So thank you everyone involved and uh, all the rangers, traditional owners um, that we've been working with. <laughs>